Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Ego. Ego. It's the Latin word for I. (laughs) Imagine that. But we're not going to talk about its meaning today. We're going to break it into an acronym. Are you edging God? out or are you exalting God only? Right? I wish I could take credit for this, but I can't. It was this wonderful priest that I heard his homily last week. And yet when I go online and I say acronyms for ego, those are in there. Pretty cool. I actually forgot the first one, (laughs) the first one, which is edging God out. What really stuck in my mind was exalting God always. That's the difference. And it's slight. It's slight. Here's how. So when I started speaking, it was such a, a rush. It was so incredible because the feedback that I got from people coming up to me afterwards was exactly what I had hoped. I had really hoped that I could be out there speaking to people and making them laugh and making them cry and making their heart just kind of open to a new way of life with God. And so when that feedback was coming to me, I just kept saying thank you and thank you and thank you. And I kind of felt like I don't know, maybe my ego was getting boosted. Like I, the meaning of the word in Latin, was the reason. So I went to confession. Here's my cute little confession story for you. But while I was in confession, I was sharing with the priest, who is Jesus? And I said, you know, I'm just... I think I'm kind of being full of myself here and I'm being conceited and I'm taking credit. I'm full of pride. And he was like, well, let me help you. Can I help? And of course, he became my spiritual director. If that's not a gift from God, giving me a spiritual director in confession, I don't know what is. Because at that time, I didn't know the first thing about finding spiritual help. And I knew that with a ministry in my life, I really wanted a priest. And I wanted a super holy priest. But I had no idea how to start. And boom, God gives me this amazing priest in the confessional. But now, after some time, this was back in 2018, I said, Or I say now when people say, oh, you're such a great speaker, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so God working through me. I can't take any of the credit. And it's wonderful because a lot of the time we can't accept compliments very well. I know I don't. Somehow somehow I always like, oh, you look so good today. I'm like, oh, what, you don't see the gray hair coming through? Like I always self-deprecate myself because I'm uncomfortable receiving compliments. And God wants us to receive them because guess what? That's somebody else telling us what our natural gifts and talents and perhaps our charisms are. 
So the difference in just that for me was a massive ego change. Because I was edging God out, not really intentionally. At that time, I didn't understand how to really glorify God always. Which is where I'm at now, exalting God always. Only, only, not always. That would be ega. <laughs> I don't think there's a word ega out there. So, reflection time. If you look at how you spend your day, are you edging God out? And then expect him to do miraculous things in your life. Yet, he's not really even a part of your life. Nor anybody else's life because you're not bringing him in to their lives by bringing him out of yours. We spoke about being a disciple and how do you do that? And it really is about loving yourself and loving those around you where they are at this moment, which is sometimes really, really hard. And so this is again where the ego comes into play. Are you going to try And love people on your own? Edging God out? Good luck with that. Because I've tried it. It doesn't work. It's so frustrating. But when you exalt God all only (laughs) and always, your pride gets kind of stepped on. And you're humble because you are going to God and you are thanking God and you are asking God to change your heart. But I don't want us to forget the discipleship aspect of it, which is bringing God out of us and into somebody else's life. What does that mean? Let's say something happened and you're so grateful. One of your children graduated, someone got a new job, you had a new baby, you just had an awesome time in adoration. I mean, I don't really know. (laughs) It could be anything. But when you say, thank you, Lord, even for grace, simple grace for meals, Be reverent about it. Be real about it. Don't just zip through it. I'm guilty of this. Geez, we just started doing the grace thing a couple of years ago. It wasn't something that my husband was really into. But now, I mean, I was, it was kind of like, well, I'm doing it. And at least at the end, I finally have him making the sign of the cross. But that's not me. That's him. He's doing it. I'm not telling him to. So that's God working in him. And sometimes he sits there with his hands folded waiting for me to start the prayer. Now this is true. Living God out in your life and having someone else take God in. That's like practical, real stuff. So just thank God. Maybe you've got someone in your life that you're not all that fond of right now, or maybe someone is struggling with an addiction. Maybe you are having relationship issues with people at the office, your boss, could be family members. And the last thing you want to do when you're kind of in a tiff or not really getting along with that person is throw God in their face. (laughs) You know, that's probably not the, the right thing. But you could say, I'm so grateful to God for you in my life. Thank you. It might blow that person away, but the fact that you went there with something and you brought God into it, it brings new meaning to what you just said because 
you're thanking the creator. You're thanking, and if someone knows you well enough, they know that you're filled with faith. So that bringing God into it is turning up that comment, that sentiment, way up. So let's exalt God only. I think about what I thought was the funniest, funniest thing back in the day when Bart Simpson said grace at the table. Thanks, God. We worked for all this food. Or uh, what was something like, hey, we worked for all this food, God, so thanks for nothing. And I thought that was hilarious. This was back in the day, right? Because I kind of believed it. Yeah, God didn't do any of this. The food... The money brought the food. The people cooked the food. So funny. Edging God out was how I lived most of my, and when I say most, 95% of my life. And so I look at it now as such a joy to exalt God, to speak about what he's done in my life, and to help others Find that same peace and healing and love and joy for themselves and for everyone and be able to speak about it in a way that isn't shoving it in their face. Because guess what? When people see that things are changing in you, they know God's at work. (laughs) I'm telling you, the fact that I stopped swearing was a miracle in and of itself. You have no idea. No idea. And that was one of the first things God worked on with me. Let's not edge God out. Let's exalt God only and always. Egoa. (laughs) Maybe we can think every time we see ego, we throw the A on. Oh, I need to exalt God only and always. All right, everyone. I love you all. I really do. I'm so grateful to be walking this journey with you. If there's anything that I can help you on in terms of spiritual direction, any kind of faith coaching, again, I'm not a trained person, but it's basically these podcasts, but a lot more intimate with what's going on in your individual lives. I'm here. Send me an email. We can have a quick chat. This is how it goes. We talk for 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You see what it's kind of all about. Then we pray on it and we come back. And then I look to you and I say, okay, I don't have a fee. What can you afford? So don't think that it's this ridiculously costly engagement. Everything's different. So that being said, if it's not me Find someone to help you more intimately. I know that was a struggle for me. I will never forget. I will never forget when um, the real life Catholic guy who I cannot, (laughs) I cannot remember his name. I don't know. We were talking. It was early in my ministry. And he said, you need a spiritual director. You're going to need to discern a lot of things. And that's the same way in life. And we need to have those spiritual companions that are, that are like close to us, that are the ones that know us the most and the worst, right? But the ones that we trust. And so I just ask that you pray on that. And again, I'm not promoting me. I'm just telling you that we all need help. <laughs> That's the deal. That's why we're actually supposed to be living more in community and more where we're not in our own houses and all about ourselves. Back in the day, I mean, there were farms and people were growing different foods and they were exchanging them. And, you know, you maybe knew how to build decks, but this guy knew how to build fireplaces. And that's kind of how it was all about. And we all helped each other in our certain needs. So don't feel bad about seeking help because we all need it. And some people can help. And why not? 
why not reach out, (laughs) again, putting the ego aside, and see if God is moving you toward that. You never know until you do sit down and speak with him and let him put it on your heart. Exalt God only and always today. Please, in some way, say thank you to him. Tell him you love him. Do something that makes people see that God is in your life. And then everything is because of him. And then you will be a disciple because you're bringing out the Lord. You're exalting him. Because sometimes it's really hard to express salvation from Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us with his precious blood. If I started talking to someone about that, I remember the first time I heard the precious blood of Jesus and to pour it on us. I was like, what? (laughs) Like, why would we do that? It was so bizarre. And I just think about everything that I continue to learn on this road of faith, in this life, how my views are changing, how my heart is changing, how my knowledge and understanding and God's wisdom. It's just amazing. But that's the deal. We all learn every day, all day. We just have to be more like a child and less like an adult. Think about how a child totally trusts their parents, right? In general, I know some of us have had really sucky parents, sorry. And yes, I did say sucky. But it's true. It's true. Trust me, I've done many an inbound session. There, all of us have had such a messed up upbringing. It's nobody's particular fault, per se. It's just our parents didn't have a book, (laughs) necessarily, nor did they follow it if they did. And they did the best they could. But anyway, I'm going down another path here. Maybe we'll save that discussion for another time. And if there's anything that you want to hear, specifically me address, send me an email, Kendra at KendraVonAsh.com. And I will go ahead and put it on a little list and cover those topics for you guys. Maybe a few days, depending on what the topic is. All right, everyone, my 10 minutes are way over. I'm going to let you go. Live your life filled with joy and peace and God and exalting God only and always, not edging God out. Have a blessed and inspired day.